heart if the world stops tomorrow Suppose the edge is simply the end The answer to my cruelest wishes If the world came to an end The boy still would be And so would the show we'd lose His power to the doorbell As for Dusty Bin We'd hear no more of him We'd no longer chase Duncan Orville is a retired Scott welder and has been church warden here for over 30 years. Arnold, what hymn have you chosen for us tonight? The song that I would most like to hear tonight is the Birdie Song by the Tweets. That isn't the one you originally chose in your letter. By the Sid Lawrence Orchestra then? No, you can't have it well, by the... James letter. Lass, I don't mind. No, They're both as good. No, you have to have the original choice from your original letter. Oh. Uh, the song I'd very much like to hear is Atmosphere by Russ Abbott. <laughs> Hold a chicken in the air, put a deck chair no. up your nose, buy a jumbo no, jet. No, don't be silly. Uh, oh, it's horrible being no. in when you're eight and a half. I've got your picture on <laughs> me wall. Here's the letter you wrote, and it says, I would very much like to hear that famous old hymn that brings back so many memories for me. Praise my soul, the king of heaven, so you can jolly well go ahead and ask for it properly yourself. I'd very much like to hear that wonderful old hymn that brings back so many happy memories for me. Praise my soul, the king of heaven. Very nice. Have you heard it by Maggie Moon? I love Maggie Moon. Well, we she don't have, have it by Maggie, Maggie Moon, Moon or anyone else for that She's matter. Got enormous but we do have <laughs> that favourite old classic, Priscilla Black. <laughs> Sharon here. Yeah, I'm great. Didn't I tell you what happened? I won the competition. You know, win a night out with George Michael. Be George Michael, yeah? Yeah, match the eyebrows to the face and say not more than ten words why George is the dishiest face in town. Yeah, I know. No. Oh, he's a miserable so-and-so. No, that wasn't the ten words. It's in next door. Just give me another letter. Anyway, they sent this big limousine round right. And when I got to the restaurant, there he was, George, on his own. Well, when I say he was on his own, I mean his manager was there and a publicity lady from the record company, you know. And a group from the agency that promoted the competition and some other people that I wasn't even introduced to. But it was great just being with George. Yeah. Well, when I say with George, I mean, I wasn't actually on the same table as him. 
<laughs> well, in fact, I wasn't even in the same restaurant, you know. But I could see him fiddling with his cannelloni across the street in the other restaurant. It was crazy. Hey, and it was brilliant in the nightclub afterwards. I went off and I spoke to him and I said, Aya? Well, he's, you know, well, he didn't say much, really. He didn't say much. Well, he said, who are you? But it was the way that he said it. Then his bouncers tried to pull me off him, you know, because I was trying to kiss his stubble. And they said they'd ejaculate me from the club if it didn't stop, so it did stop. But they threw me out later anyway because I passed out and I was sick. It was the most fantastic evening of my life. Yeah. What is it next week? Um, I think it's win a short motoring holiday with Andrew Ridgely. <laughs> Because we sing quite well We hope to make it realistic It's something we have to tell It's not the stupid outfits We think we look alright We dress real slick, we're moving tight With one big handicap We can't mind I don't know why <laughs> If we had a red cards We might earn a few bars But unless we learn to find in time We better keep our day job We can't mind We can't mind We can't mind We can't mind, we can't mind. Nurse, will you treat this patient, please? Yes, sir. Tomorrow we'll go for a picnic. I want to take some nice sweeties and lemonade and lots of chocolate. We'll go see the dookies and we'll throw them some bread. Chicago, Chicago, that's my sort of town. Hey, Frank, yeah, Frank. Oh, yeah, Frank. no, son, yeah, yeah. Chicago, Frank. Yeah. Chicago, 9,751 reported gangland killings last year. Yeah. Home of Al Capone, the mafioso. Oh, yeah. You want people to associate you with that, Frank? No, no. Forget yeah. Chicago, Frank. Yeah. Uh... It's up to you, New York. New York, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. New York is drugs rings, vice rings, the mob, Little Italy. Mm, yeah. Forget New York, Frank. Forget it. <laughs> what you suggest I sing then, Nelson? Well, I penned this this morning. Try that. Okay, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's go, Frank. One, two. I want two, three, and. Nelson, that's a pile of garbage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of York. <laughs> when I came to the pile of
that everything was boring. Same place and dead on its feet. I said, honey, time to move away the cobwebs. It's time to hit a different beat. Boogie in Balmoral. I want to prefer to rock and roll. I've had a hope of a born less girl. Learned how to fly a plane. And when the dead would kiss the Marines goodbye, I laughed like a big block train. <laughs> Being Balmoral, hustling high grove, twisting in Sandringham. I want to prefer to rock and roll. <laughs> now the joint's pulsating. Palace Rock is here to stay. Everybody's gyrating. I'm gonna have to step a ton of rocky 24 hours a day. Boogie in Balmoral. Hustle in High Grove. Twisting in Sandringham. I want a forbidden rock and roll. Get down at Gatcombe. Clarence House is pure soul. Body Porter, Kensington. I want a forbidden rock and roll. Maggie and Kieran have been on the folk club circuit for two decades, travelling around the country with their unique musical style. They've often been described as a cult, probably because they only chant a quarter. But what is it that drives them on? We bought this barn 18 months ago. Before that, we had a motorcycle and a sidecar. Before that, we just had the sidecar. <laughs> Twenty-five years ago, we bought this barn 18 months ago. Before that, we had a motorcycle and a sidecar. Tell us about your forthcoming summer solstice tour. It's aimed at reviving Mother Earth and the <laughs> Travelling along the highways and byways inspired Maggie and Kieran to name their group. Mm, we're called Triangle! We couldn't think of the name of a shape with only two sides to it. Oh, two lines joined together. <laughs> that didn't seem quite right. So we called ourselves Triangle. <laughs> we were hoping to get another six members in the group. Then we could call ourselves Romboy Tetrony. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a <laughs> What was it that brought Maggie and Kieran together? We first met when Kieran came in to see me at a beard counselling service that I ran. A beard counselling service? To help people through moments of crises with their beards. Young, young real ale drinkers, presidents of geographical societies, those sort of people. Anyway, Kieran came in because he was quite worried about his beard. In fact, he was quite desperate by the time I saw him. You know, he was, he was threatening to slash his wrist, poison himself, throw himself off a cliff! And what did you suggest? The poison. Much less <laughs> much. This is a Kieran solo piece, actually. And how long does this normally last? Oh, about four hours. <laughs> I believe in oxygen. I believe in prayer. Some of my gripes are exhaust pipes as it rains. Bedtime. It's a hard, relentless treadmill of performances when you're a top folk group. And it's also pretty hard if you're Maggie and Kieran, too. Where will they be next year? Will their quest for success succeed? And above all, who frankly could give a toss? Because of the personal nature of this programme, some people taking part wish to remain anonymous. Can you give us some insight into your experiences which led you to consult a sex therapist? Well, he just wasn't doing it. I mean, he couldn't, and I wouldn't, do you know what I mean? He was impotent. Oh, no, he never gave me no cheek. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
I couldn't do it. Yeah, but I think they told you, you you wasn't interested in whether I fingered or not, was you? No, no, I wasn't. So you were frigid, cold? I was cold at that time, because we, well, we didn't have the central heating put in. No, no, we, we didn't get that until after we'd seen the sexy doctor. Sex therapist. Oh, yeah. But she's a bit of a light, isn't she? Isn't she? Stay. She told us that we had to remove all pressure from the marital bed. Yeah, well, that was stupid, because, like, um, the, the bed wasn't being put under any pressure at that stage. No, that's right, because you were sleeping in the shower's room. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yes, but what about the treatment? Well, it was an hour every day. Uh, first two weeks, it was um, hands to yourselves, and then the second two weeks, it was hands to each other, but hands off the whatnots. <laughs> and then the following two weeks after that, it was do it with the whatnots. Yeah, but we, we weren't allowed to... Uh, Thinking until two weeks after that. So the treatment was a complete success? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. It was, yes. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, spending all that time naked together, we, we got to know each other all over again, and then we, mm. we shared our feelings. That's, right. yeah, that's how we found out. Yeah, we found out. What exactly did you find out? Well, we can't stand the sight of each other. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a very emotional day for me. Been to a funeral of a very dear close personal friend of mine, Porky Pratt. We were part of a double act together for many years. Dandel and Pratt, two men and a budgery guard. The budgie went solo, but old Porky soldiered on for many years. What a trooper. He was a pro right to the end. Took three curtain calls in the chapel of rest. And you know, as they lowered old Porky into the ground, for one magical moment, I thought he was going to go into his old escapology routine. <laughs> Do you know who I saw at the churchyard? Old Plunger McGee. I said, Plunger, how old are you now? He said, I'm 97 years old. I said, hardly worth you going home, love. <laughs> Absent friends. Excuse me, ma'am, Fira. The United States Ambassador is here to see you, Miss Shirley Temple. taking Chalky for a walk. Is that a road Chalky's walking along? No, it's a tightrope. Chalky must wait until I finish drawing. Chalky's going to the pub. <laughs> Chalky likes to drink orange juice. He doesn't know it's got a large vodka in it. Isn't Chalky doing funny things? Oh, 
dear. Chalky isn't feeling very well. Poor Chalky. He never learns, does he? I'd like to thank the returning officer and his staff for their very hard work during the 87 recounts, which I demanded. And I'd like to congratulate the new MP, Ian Toady, on his victory. So and so. In this, the new constituency of Newcastle, Anglesey and Edinburgh. As for us in the Liberal Democratic, Communist, Fascist and Zebra Crossing Party, although we came seventh and only polled 107 votes, or uh, 108 as it was on one of the group counts, I consider this to have been a victory. This result shows that our electoral system is nothing but a complete sham, and I shall be pressing for a system of voting as there is in the Eurovision Song Contest, <laughs> uh, where we, we, we would take our rightful place as the Norway of modern politics. <laughs> now, uh, as you know, I am a local lass. Uh, I've lived here now for almost five weeks, and uh, it saddens me greatly not to be representing you. Some people say they didn't vote for us because our policies are very stupid. Well, yes, they are very stupid, but that hasn't stopped the Tory party, has it? Old Mad Maggie and her motley mob of, um, of men. Uh, but, um, but I blame this defeat on, on, on the media, the, the weather, and the fact that some people were on their holidays, uh, specifically our campaign organiser. But most of all, I, I blame this defeat on the disgusting smear campaign directed at me by my opponents. They have suggested that I am a reasonable, kind, and dependable man with a happy family life who cares about the future of this country. Well, if people believe slanderous remarks like that and took me to be such a man, what chance did I have of becoming an MP? To sing a dance and model like myself, it's really important to keep your mind and body in very good condition. So every morning, I jump out of bed, I meditate, and then I go home. <laughs> when I'm at home, I'll do some sit-ups and push-ups, and then some high-energy dancing. Carlton Westgate, he's my personal manager agent, he says it's really good for me to get hot and sweaty three times a week. <laughs> I said, Carlton? Just sing a dance and model. Don't sweat, we glow. <laughs> and he says, Maxine, you're glowing like a pig. <laughs> oh, he makes me die. <laughs> oh. Even my home on my own in the evening, so I'll just have some tuna fish, some yogurt, some grapes, that sort of thing. You know, self discipline's very important when you're an actress, singer, dancer, model. <laughs> but if he's paying, we go to Glendolfo's now, Petit de Foire, grab the farm fruit, vegetables, chips, sweets, bitter rolls, and any cheese balls. <laughs> Carlton really likes to see me stuff myself. He's really good for my career. There I go on and on and on about myself again. <laughs> what was it you said about me? <laughs> Get down if that comes. Now in the house it feels so old. Body pop a can in time. I want the fit to rock and roll. Boogie and bumbo roll. Hustle and high grow. Twisting and thundering up. I want the fit to rock and roll. 